Hey guys, today we are going to talk about combos in ED8s. I'm going to pull seven combos, seven of my favorite combos, and explain why I like them so much. I'm going to start with Basalt Monolith and Power Artifact. Power Artifact is a relatively expensive card now, but it didn't always used to be. In fact, when I purchased my Power Artifact for my combo deck, it was probably like $20. It was slight play at $20. It was a while back. But the combo is very simple and the monolith is good on its own. So what you're going to do is you will enchant the monolith. Enchanted artifacts activated ability costs two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana ability cost to activate to less than one mana. Now the ability to untap it costs free mana, but now reduced by two, it costs one. So you can add free mana to your mana pool, pay one of the of that, and then untap it, and then you get a net gain of two. You can do this infinite amount of times, and you will create infinite amount of mana. The reasons I like this combo very simple to pull off you will be in blue and the monolith is good on its own as well as the power artifact the power artifact has other targets normally in that deck i like it it is something that uh, is not surprising to my play group anymore but when i first played it it was kind of fun very simple to pull off you only need two cards and you are in blue, one card being an artifact, the other card being an enchantment. Next, uh, Helm of Obedience. This is a good one. And Leyline of the Void. So uh, one of the things I like about this combo is just the massive amount of text on Helm of Obedience, right? If this is the first time your opponent sees this combo, they are not really going to get it. What you're going to do is you're going to put the ley line of the void out. You can, if it starts from your hand, that's great. If it doesn't, that's okay. You can play hard cast it. So ley line reads, if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard, remove it from the game instead. So it's targeting your opponent's graveyard. And the helm of obedience reads, X put the top card of target opponent's library into his or her graveyard. Continue doing this until you have put X cards or a creature card into that graveyard, whichever occurs first. If the last card put into the graveyard is a creature card, bury Helm of Obedience and put that creature into play under your control as though it was just cast. X cannot equal zero. So X has to be one or more, but you pay one, you target your opponent's library, and they cannot put any card into their graveyard because they don't really have a graveyard. Remember, if a card would be put into your graveyard, remove it from the game so it's never actually put into the graveyard and your account is never, the account never gets there. So you are going to mill out your opponent. Uh, the reason I like this deck, or I like this combo so much is due to the interactions it's not a I win combo, it's a you lose combo that you can do multiple times. And that's what's really fun about it because you can hit targets at a different time period. You're not going to be able to hit, unless you can untap the helm, you're not going to be able to hit the entire table. But as a, oh, this is what's happening, lots of fun. Now this combo is weaker, but I did play the combo during Mirage. I remember Mirage being... I liked it, but I didn't love it. I love Tempest. I did love Tempest, and I love the Unglue set, and Mirage was far less than those two sets. But this was the combo I was so fun to play with. Uh, you have the Bloom, which has always been kind of a unique picture. Free a black and a green enchantment. Choose a card in your hand and remove it from the game. Add two black or two green play this ability as a mana source now prosperity we have better card draw mechanics now but prosperity used to be the best one we had at the time so x and a blue each player draws x cards 
So in EDH, when you have access to lots of mana and you have access to lots of cards, this is a really fun combo. What is fun about this, in my opinion, is your opponents are going to draw cards as well, so they can interact with you. And there's, it's just a lot of fun, especially if everyone's playing a combo deck. And I'm very, very glad now that we have these tricolors. I believe this is enemy to green. Yes, it is the enemy to green colors. I was really happy to see more commanders, or I don't know how many commanders exist in this color pattern, but yeah, I, I really felt it was really great. And it was something that uh, the new commander decks have allowed to be played. And that's great because it's one of the most classic combos. I remember it very well from back in the day. One of my friends had a deck, but being poor elementary slash middle school students, oh, actually elementary students, we didn't really have four copies of them. And we played the game totally differently. So you started with your hand with like seven cards that you wanted. <laughs> and then the opponent would just, you just go off um, after you played it. So here you start off with like five land and then these two cards. Next, um, Painter Servant and Grindstone. The reason that I love this combo is because it's one, two, and then three. So one, you play the Grindstone, two, you play the Painter Servant, and then three, you activate the Grindstone. That's just always been really cool to me that that's how it worked. So Grindstone, uh, one for artifact, target player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. If both cards share a color, repeat this process. Pain to serve it. Choose a color. All cards that aren't, aren't, aren't on the battlefield, spells and permanents are the chosen color in addition to their other colors. So permanents also mean land. Essentially, you mill out your opponent and there's very little they can do with it. I just like how this combo is one, two, and then you go back to the one card for the free, and then there's a one free, right? And then it's just quite incredible in terms of the symmetry. I guess not, I wouldn't call it symmetry, but the OCD-ness of this card is very appealing to me. It's pleasing to me that this is how it works. And it is a five color type of deal, but it's only really based on one color and your opponent, you can pick whatever you want. Overall, like this is a well-known combo, and as an artifact, it can be played in any deck that you choose, which is also a nice bonus. Next, we will talk about one of my favorite ODs and goodies, Survival of the Fittest and Recurring Nightmare. If you can imagine, this actually was a deck. Neither of these cards were banned in standard at the time, and this was the deck that you had to beat. Uh, and I remember one of the Pro Tour top eight decks that you could buy had this as it had like Birds of Paradise, Wall of Roots, and all that stuff. And then it won using this combo and using that like verdant dude, the verdant like green dude who makes one one uh, tokens. I mean, that just tells you how bad like the creatures were back in the day. That was the best target that you could hit. You couldn't hit like something epically awesome, just the dude that made 1-1 one, one tokens all the time. So Survival of the Fittest, one in a green, one green, discard a creature card, search your library for a creature card, reveal that card, and then put it into your hand. So Recurring Nightmare, sacrifice a creature, return it from, Recurring Nightmare to its owner's hand, return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you're discarding creatures, and then you're bringing them back but you are also tutoring for it. And Survival of the Fittest is quite possibly one of the strongest cards ever made for EDH. You literally are tutoring whenever you want for one green. And as an additional benefit, those things that you don't want or you want in your graveyard are now in your graveyard. And lastly, oh, actually, no, we have two more. Bizarre Baghdad and the Bridge from Below. You might be like, hmm, this sounds like a really strange combo. You know, it's not that great, right? Because there's so many different opponents. The reason I like this combo a ton is you have to win out. 
you just have to win out. And that's what I like about it is if you don't win in that turn, your opponent will deal with it because it is likely they have creatures that can be put into your graveyard. So Bridge from Below reads, whenever a non-token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, if Bridge from Below is in your graveyard, put a 2-2 black zombie creature onto the battlefield. Whenever a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from the battlefield, if Bridge from Below is in your graveyard, exile Bridge from Below. So very, very cool ability. Uh, and Bazaar in Baghdad is obviously one of the better discard mechanisms. I've actually never seen a Bazaar Baghdad when I was playing. Well, I don't know what happened to them all, if like people realized the cards were good, but even if I saw it, I wouldn't realize this was a good card. And it was made be much better from Bridge from Below. This card is very abusive and I like it because it's difficult. The difficulty level of you winning this in ED8 is quite high. Because your opponents might be able to put stuff into their uh, creatures into their graveyard. And there's a lot of opponents. The more opponents you have, the less ability this becomes an actual combo and you cannot survive using this combo forever. And that's why I like about it, it's difficult. And lastly, one of my favorite combos, and I'm glad that it is in the Nahiri colors. Uh, the walker can be replaced by any zero artifact. So Goblin Bombardment is one in a red, sacrifices a creature, deals one damage to target creature or player. And the renewal means you play with your hand revealed. If you will draw a card, reveal that the top card of your library instead. If it's a creature card, put it into your graveyard, otherwise draw that card. Whenever a creature is put in your graveyard from play, return it to your hand. So the Enduring Renewal has a ton of thing, combo mechanics that can be played with it, but the easiest one in my opinion is to play a zero artifact creature, which now you have many of, and then just sacrifice it, deal one damage, bring it back, deal one more, more damage, and just machine gun all the creatures if you want and all the players. I like it. It's a really, really fun um, combo. I've always enjoyed this combo, and it's something that every casual player has probably played once or twice or some variant of it. So let me know in the comments below what your favorite combo was when you were a kid. And this is why these are my seven favorite combos. It's not like new stuff. It's just like old stuff I grew up with. And I, when you are younger and you're like, oh, that was really cool. It's still pretty cool when you're an adult, right? Anyways, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below with your favorite combo. Bye, guys.